Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom. Today I meet a painter that lives here in Madison. Actually, very interesting story how they got back into painting again. Or actually, they got back into painting after going to school, then got into a got hit by a car and started painting and putting their stuff online because they had nothing else to do. And that's how they got back into painting. It's a it, it's a fascinating story. We start right out with that story. So we talk more about that and um also finding a way to promote themselves in comic cons, in going to pop-ups and finding ways to display their art in more unconventional manners. Also the benefit of finding like-minded artists in lowbrow groups on Facebook. That was hard to say, lowbrow groups. There we go. Hooking up with those people, talking more, talking about promoting their stuff. Uh, putting their, uh, she put her stuff in an art gallery in Indiana for a while uh, with some people that ran stuff there that loved her work. Her work is very unique. It's kind of, we describe it kind of as alien portraits, maybe. It's, it's a unique style and uh, it's a great interview. I was really happy to meet the person. So here's my interview on this episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast starting right now. My name's Amy Ragudi, and I'm a artist, a painter. You know, work some odd jobs as well. Oh, odd jobs? What do you mean odd jobs? Well, not odd jobs. I, I work a couple part-time jobs too. So are you a full-time artist and you're doing that on top of like the odd jobs or to help sustain the full-time artists or like, what, or is it just you decided to take some part-time jobs? Well, I, uh, I had a full-time career. Um, but in 2019, I got in a really bad auto wreck on Willie street. Oh, wow. Yeah. I got a head on collision. And so, um, it took me like a year to learn how to walk again. Really? Yeah. And, um, so I closed down my practice. I was an acupuncturist for 21 years. Okay. And yeah, I got a kind of weird backstory. Yeah, no, keep going. This is fascinating. Yeah. Okay. And um, so, and then right when I was, you know, right after surgery and everything to repair my legs, I, the pandemic hit. So I had been painting again since like 2011, Uh huh. but very, very part-time. And because of my injuries, you know, I had a lot of injuries. Uh, the fact that I had to close my practice for so long, yeah, um, it, I just couldn't restart it again. It would have, I would have had to start from ground zero. And then I also, it's just been this process of figuring out what I can physically do because the healing process is so long for the type of injuries that I had. It's like two years to, you know, heal up enough that you even can figure out you know, what you're capable of. So wow. during, yeah, during that time, um, when I finally could, I mean, I couldn't even paint in bed, you know, I had so many fractures that, uh, when I finally could get to the easel, I could paint for about 20 minutes at a time. Um, but I had to be really careful because my leg would swell up. Oh no. But what happened was, you know, with the pandemic too, I mean, what else could I do? So I ended up, you know, just painting more and more and I needed to pay bills. And so I started a Etsy shop and I just did everything possible online to sell my work. Really? So you hadn't, yeah. you hadn't painted since 2011, you said? Well, I started painting again in 2011. Oh, okay. Actually, yeah, I actually got a, a fine arts degree way back in the Stone Age in 1988. Oh, back in the 1900s. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I had a fine arts, you know, painting degree, but I I was very disillusioned after art school. It was a really weird time. Um, it was pretty sexist, honestly. I mean, there just wasn't much opportunity for women. And it was very, very hard to get seen. And there was no internet, no, you know, you were just, it was just a very weird, you know, who you know. Yeah. Thing. And 
I worked in galleries in Chicago and I did a bunch of stuff and I just really got very disillusioned with the art world, the art scene, um, the way it's run, the whole thing. And so I quit and became an acupuncturist and I didn't paint or draw for 15 years. Wow. Yeah, I was busy with my kids, my parents, um, my practice. And then I just, out of the blue, you know, I really stuffed it. And I started to really miss it. Okay. And it took that well, long for you to miss it, huh? Yeah I, yeah, I missed it. But I was very busy and I had a very, I had a very satisfying career. Why you know, did you I, choose to go into acupuncture, if, if I may ask? Um, my husband was injured in a fall. He fell off a building. And oh, my he had, God. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, two of us. And <clears throat> so he fractured his spine. Okay. And so he had a lot of problems as a young person. And I remember, you know, at the time, back surgery was, you know, really wasn't very advanced. And so it just what wasn't really an option. And I said, you know, don't do that. It's too invasive. They don't, they don't know what they're doing yet, you know. And I said, why don't you try something else? <laughs> and I saw, this is so silly, but I saw a special on National Geographic on acupuncture. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I said, how about this, you know? Yeah. So it wasn't even legal. We had to... Uh, it wasn't? There was these weird loopholes in Chicago at the time. Like there were people that practiced in Chinatown. They practiced very quietly. So uh, it's hard to explain, but it was... Um, it wasn't illegal to do it but there was no license for it either and so okay. sometimes you get penalized sometimes you didn't very strange yeah um, so i found somebody and uh you know i took my husband there and he said i feel great and hmm. he just said i haven't felt this good in years and i thought wow that's really fascinating you know yeah and so i just i mean it but at the time, you know, it was a hard profession to get into. I mean, there's not that many schools. So I, what I did was I ordered all the textbooks and I said, if I can understand what I'm reading, then I will go to school. Huh. Because okay. how, how would I know that I could do this thing, you know, when there's nobody to teach me or, you know. Right. So I, I read all the textbooks. I thought it was really fascinating. And I enrolled uh, in school and we moved to Wisconsin because Wisconsin still has one of the best acupuncture licenses in the country. Okay. They were one of the first, yeah. Believe it or not, Wisconsin was very far ahead in the acupuncture licenses um, than other states. Huh. It was one of the places you could legally practice. Chuck that up to things I had no idea about. That's yeah, yeah, great, right? <laughs> it is and, weird. Uh, so I moved here and I went to school in Racine because they had a school that was on the border. So people would draw, drive in, fly in, you know, and all these people from different states would come to school. Okay. So I went to school and I learned how to do that. But, you know, uh, like I said, it was very satisfying. You know, I assisted a lot of people, I improved their quality of life, you know, so it was very satisfying in that way. Yeah. But. Uh, sooner or later, you know, the art bug comes and bites you in the rear. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> like, you can't get away from it. It's <laughs> and I just, I just realized. I, t I remember one day I told my husband, I said, if I do not paint, I said, if I don't find out, you know, what it is that's inside me that I need to get on a canvas, I said, I am going to die an unhappy person. Oh wow. <laughs> like I just knew that it was really significant, but, but, you know, I was so busy with my kids. I had so much responsibility that I didn't have, I really didn't have the luxury to even um, think about it. Okay. So as they started to get a little more independent, um, then, you know, I was like, okay. And I started to paint a little bit uh, on weekends. Was painting always the, your medium of choice? I actually, you know, when I was younger, I didn't paint. And I <laughs> I went to Northern Illinois University for a painting degree. Okay. And, uh, but I started off in illustration, but I didn't like it. And I was much more of a um, 
you know, I drew, I, I was better at drawing than paint. I didn't have much experience in painting, but I had experience in drawing and I, I took all these classes and I didn't like illustration because I'm not good at doing something that somebody else tells me to do. <laughs> it just doesn't work very well. So um, I thought, and I remember my, my illustration teacher, he's just a great guy, Mark Anderson, really fine artist. And um, he said, you know, you don't have to do this. You could change to painting. And he would yell it to the back of the classroom, Amy, you can still change to painting. And because he knew, you know, so I did change my major, but as it turns out, it had to do with, you know, the school really, um, I just didn't get a very good painting professor. I had a couple and they, I mean, one just sat in his office and smoked a pipe. <laughs> oh, I had a teacher like that in high school. Yeah. 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 And so I was just completely left to my own devices. And I spent a lot of time doing just really bizarre things all alone. And then I also, by accident or some I don't even know how I got a studio space in with these grad students um, down in this basement in this building. And it was like dimly lit <laughs> with pipe, like hot pipes. Okay. <laughs> it was a terrible studio. And, um, but I was, but it was all mine, you know? Yeah. So um, I just started making really weird things at that point. Cause you know, everything was about abstraction. And so I, but really deep down, I was more into more realistic imagery or surreal imagery. But right. I made all kinds of stupid, crazy stuff in there and like would draw on my friends and put stuff together with, um, I'd go to the hardware store and buy glue and razor blades and <laughs> nails and make all these things. Everybody's and, like, here comes that serial killer again, yeah. buying the supplies. But mostly, I, you know, I think what I made just looked like dioramas. Remember how you had to do those? Yeah. Cool? Yeah. So I made these things that were like dioramas or like little stages. And of course, they're all in the trash. I mean, I don't have a single thing to show <laughs> for, <laughs> for that time period. Well, then let me ask you this. Okay. Um, <laughs> then what was your point of like, what, what were you expecting the outcome of taking these classes to be? Cause it sounds like, I mean, nobody was giving you direction and it seemed like you didn't really know what you wanted to do. So why were you taking painting classes <laughs> you know, or, or drawing classes or any of these? I just, it was, you know, when you're in art school or. Well, I guess I, that's what I'm asking. Like, why did you go to art school? Like, did you know what yeah, you wanted to do? I, it still was, I still was doing my, well, you know, I was still taking drawing uh huh and, um, you know, that was the last couple of years that I was just kind of like tossed out the <laughs> right. And um, you know, and I was surrounded by other people who were making art and they were really the people that were influential on me. So it was those other, it was those grad students. Oh, for sure. Yeah. My friends. And um I just, you know, I was painting, but you know, because I was so unsupervised, I didn't learn any proper techniques. Like I was like, oh. I'll put um, this box. I remember one time I was like, I bought a box of bird gravel and of like poured that paint, you know, <laughs> just totally crazy. But yeah. I still was grounded in that realism of drawing. So I think that, um, and then when, when I, when I graduate, you know, I mean, you're, you're on, you're on this momentum to get your degree, you know? Mm-hmm. So I just kept making things and I wanted to graduate. I was tired of being in college. I'm not the best school person, you know? And uh, so when I got out, I actually was painting, you know, and figuring things out on my own. And, um, you know, I, I was creating and stuff. But once I had a baby and we were really broke and I needed to make money and the art world was just this like incomprehensible, uh, labyrinth to me mm -hmm. you know, and I have no I think it is to everybody to tell you the truth I mean yeah, there, I, really, there really is no like here's what you do and there you go now you've made it you know no, there was <laughs> nothing and I you know I had no guidance and um so you know to me it just it just stopped making sense and it was not in inspirational anymore okay you know, I, it was just a number of factors and they all just created the perfect storm and so I just kind of walked away yeah 
you know, it was just a very confusing sort of thing. And, and, you know, I had a baby and, and, uh, and also a lot of the women artists that I knew that were successful, they did not have children and they were not married. Like there was kind of a, um, a thing of, you know, that you couldn't be an artist and also do those things like be a mom, be a, a happily married partner. You know, I just, I did not have any sort of, um, uh, examples of people that could make it work. Were these, and these were people that you're talking about, like say were more famous or more established, not just like people you went to school with. Yeah. I mean, even the artists that I met when I worked in galleries, the women that did very well, you know, they kind of really had to just immerse themselves because it was just, you know, it was just merciless. I mean, there was no, uh, you know, the way that the galleries worked and everything was, I, I remember a friend of mine brought in like 10 paintings, you know, to a gallery and they said, okay, well, these are, and it's hard enough to get anybody to even look at you. And they said, well, these are really nice. Bring us 20 more and we'll take a look at them. You know, and I had bills to pay. <laughs> right. Yeah. So it just didn't make sense anymore. Yeah. And I, I guess it's kind of interesting. And, and I think maybe this has changed over the period of artists being able to take more control and being on the internet. Um, from what you're saying there, I want to say a lot of the artists that I've met, um, and also to go back with when I said, were these established people and famous people? Because I think there are lots of independent artists who now are able to have a family and do that kind of stuff because they can run their own thing. And, and I think it's just, they're not famous. Like I meet people all the time where I'm just like, I hear what they're doing and I'm like, that's amazing. And I only just met them now. There's so many people that exist that are able to, there are people still in this town to this day. I meet people all the time that do things yeah. and, and they're like doing stuff. And I had no clue. It's, it's, I know it's, I'm trying to put this into better words, but it's kind of like the concept of there's a reason why there's a coffee shop across the street from a Starbucks because people will go to both. People will right. choose, I like this one, or people will go, I like this one because it's not so established. No. I like this one because it, or there, there are just different reasons. There are so many of the same services and artists and people out there that we can all really just if, get by. And I think that's really the dream, like not being famous, yeah. but being able to get by yeah. on what you love doing, yeah, I suppose. being able to be a working artist. But, yeah. but I think um, really, you know, one of the things that I, that I see uh, is that, you know, when I was graduated, the whole goal was to be a fine artist and, you know, get into a gallery, get into a museum, possibly you could teach, you know, if you pursued your education. But when I think when, you know, really we have the lowbrow artists to thank for, um, you know, kind of providing us this platform of being able to market ourselves and create our own destiny. Yeah. Because they were the people that crossed that threshold of um, commercialism and fine art. You know, they were, they, they sort of tiptoed on a tightrope, you know, um, because before that, you know, you were an illustrator, you were a fine artist. Right. The two shall never mix. And it was, and there was a lot of weird stigma too, you know, like people oftentimes really look down on illustrators. They look down on commercial artists and the, and you know, they're, wor they're working their butts off, you know, mm -hmm. but um, now that, you know, um, and it, it has its good points and its bad points because now, you know, you're supposed to develop a brand, blah, blah, blah. Right. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not a brand. I'm just me, you know? Yeah. It's almost like being forced into the thing I was saying before, where it's like, well, I don't need to be famous and be a brand. It's like, hey, I'm me and I make this. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's what it comes down to. And it's like you were talking about earlier before we started about, you know, what you make is what you make. And yeah. And it took me a while to understand that. I, I mean, that was sort of there's been some advantages to starting this late in life because I'm starting very late. <laughs> I mean, I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm a member of ARP now, <laughs> <laughs> right. you know, so, but on one hand, it's great because I have the maturity and I had a career 
and I don't have the insecurities at all that I did when I was younger. Mm -hmm. And I don't care whether somebody likes my stuff or not at all. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that part's really good and really healthy. Um, and I also have, you know, more of a business background that helps me, you know, I mean, I'm able to organize myself, that sort of thing. I understand some things. Um, but then also at my age, I don't have the energy. Like I did that Comic-Con yesterday and I'm tired today. Yeah. Well, you know? And that's the other thing, uh, going back to what I was asking you before, where I was like, you know, what were you looking to do when you went into school? That's the beauty of uh, managing your own stuff. Like the fact that you started out going to a fine art school and the goal was to like, you were going to get in galleries and you were showing people yeah. galleries. You're presenting at comic cons now and you're bringing paintings it, and that's brilliant. Yeah. Like what made you, what made you go like, I should table, like, I love it. Like, I think your stuff absolutely works there. And what made you think to do that? When did you start thinking about, you know, uh, tabling at these comic cons? Um, it was just last year, really. I mean, okay. I this year to do some, I'd never done an art fair. I, and the, I'll be honest, you know, the art fair, a lot of the art fairs in Wisconsin, I was like, I don't belong there. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, like I, I get what you mean, look, which is all really good. You know, I mean, who doesn't like beautiful landscapes or nicely done jewelry or whatever, but I just saw no opportunity for me there. And really it was through, I think the, um, it was through these online communities. I mean, for me personally, because I was so injured, you know, I, I mean, I couldn't walk around the block. I couldn't drive for a long time. I couldn't do anything. So, and then the pandemic on top of that. So I really started to, um, just connect with other artists through Instagram and through some online Facebook groups. Like what groups? Um, there was a lowbrow group that I've been part of for a long time. Uh, and also drawing from experience, the Dark Art Society through Chet Czar. I saw you post about that the other day. I didn't know what that was. Yeah, that's a whole group of weirdos that you might <laughs> like. <laughs> okay, that's the thing. Um, and this this does go back to what we were talking about beforehand. I love and always wanted to be able to do the type of artwork you do, but I can't. But I love looking at it, and I love being jealous of people that have the ability. So that well, I, I should check out that group. And I'll say, you know, that I definitely tread the line on, um, you know, I, I, I told them, I said, I don't know that I'm a dark artist. I think I'm a dark pink artist. <laughs> <laughs> I get that. All right. Yeah. I, you know, I'm not really into gore. Um, no, me neither. I don't watch any, you know, horror movies or anything like that. And I'm not into, uh, the devil, <laughs> but I, but I like um, mystery. I like enchantment. Yeah. I like, and I, honestly, a lot of my paintings, I do intentionally yank people's chain. You know, I, I sneak little things in there. I sit and laugh while yeah. I'm doing things. And, um, I get more of an alien type of vibe from your stuff. Yeah, definitely. You know, kind of, um, I'm really into the idea of, I, I love science fiction. I always mm -hmm. have love dystopian novels. My friend, one of my good friends was like, I don't understand. How are you saying, you know, with my, you know, just being so messed up and then the pandemic. And I said, I've been preparing for this for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> just reading all those, you know, crazy things. And right. So I think that helped a lot. And then I had, a, I have a very good um, set of friends, uh, through this funny little gallery in Indiana called Paul Henry's Art Gallery. Okay. Which is a kooky, wonderful place. And um, so I stay in touch with all of them online, and they're super supportive of me during my healing, healing process. Um, How did you meet them? Uh, through a friend. Okay. An opening, and one of my friends, who's a great artist, uh, Rick Terrio, he... Um, he, he said, you know, you should check this place out. And so I did. And I ended up driving back and forth to Indiana because I really didn't, oh. I didn't, I didn't find my people here in Madison. You know, I, I, uh, 
I just had been too busy and when, so I only had time to paint a little and then I didn't meet other artists here, you know, like mm -hmm. I didn't even know where they were. Yeah. It's mad, it's kind of weird. It doesn't have, you know, it doesn't have any galleries. It doesn't have a lot of, um, spaces where artists can present themselves. And so I just kind of gave up on Madison a little bit early on. And now I'm a little more invested and I've met some people and I'm enjoying myself, you know? Yeah. But, but in the beginning, I just, because I had these old friends, I kind of ended up, you know, shifting towards Indiana and Chicago and showing more there. And sh I did a lot of group shows. Okay. So a couple solo shows um, out there. And then I started up with this other stuff, you know, after my accident with the, you know, like Comic-Con and all that. And I, I'd like to, I, I want to keep doing it. I really love it. I love Comic-Con. I love um, doing the pop-up uh, art fairs and things just because you get to have this really direct experience with people. Yeah. You know, you can really share your work. They they want to talk to you. If they don't like it, they walk away. Yeah. And for a long time, you know, um, I would do uh, shows in other states. And, you know, you, you put your painting in a box. You say your prayers. Right. They're very stressful. And then you're not even at the opening. You don't meet anybody. Um, you don't get any feedback. You don't, you know, and it's not that I need the feedback to keep making art it's just that it's nice to share it you know mm -hmm. like and, and just talk to people and um and i think maybe that's some of my caregiving background you know like uh people connect with my work then you know i've done something nice for them i started to see other people doing the comic cons and i thought i wonder if i could do one you know yeah. And because I'm not a comic book artist. I mean, I'd like to make some zines, but we'll see if I get around to that. I was going to ask if you've ever actually done any comics or anything like that. No. But yeah, okay. All right. All right. So, and then you, but, but still, and I don't think that it's wrong that you were there. Like I said, I think you absolutely fit there, but yeah, it's, it's, it's the whole leap. Like you went to table there. Like, did you feel weird doing that? Did you feel like, what the hell am I doing here? You know, I always I, feel like, what the hell am I doing? I, I suppose. Yeah. I guess when you do anything, it feels that way. Doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, I just, this year I just kind of was like, well, who cares? Exactly. I mean, yeah. And I think this is where the age, you know, my, the age factor really helps is, you know, I thought, well, if I go and I sit there all day long, then I sat there all day long. Right. Nothing happened to me. <laughs> and honestly, if you get hit by a truck, yeah, like I did, that puts a lot of things in the perspective. Oh my God, you can actually say if you get hit by a truck. I just realized that you can actually use that for real in a conversation. Yes, I can. And and I will tell you that that many people use it incorrectly. <laughs> now, now I know. I love it. You and get I to know. stop them and go, "Hey, you're not using that right." Yeah, I used to say it all the time. I'd say, I'm so tired. I don't know what's wrong. I feel like I got hit by a truck. Now I'm like, I never say it. Right. <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, I thought, well, so what? You know? So I went and I did one and then I did that one yesterday. And, um, and it was really interesting. You know, the people at those Comic Cons, they're very supportive. They have their own little community. Yeah. And I sort of started to learn, you know, I'm starting to learn a little bit more about, um, they kind of look out for each other. Like, if uh, somebody is in a booth and they're sitting on their hands, they're not making any sales, then other Comic-Con vendors will come and spend some money at their booth. Oh, nice. Yeah, there's actually, you know, like a community. And, you know, some of those people are just hustling so hard. I mean, they're the Comic-Con is funny because it's um, it's such a mix of art and merchandise. Right. And so you've got artists who are making it, it and it's also one of those reminders that, you know, I don't know what it'll take for people to really fully appreciate artists, mm -hmm. you know, because, you know, you know, and I hold nothing against the people that are doing this. Like I was across the way from a guy who was just selling like Pokemon things, mm -hmm. you know, they're made in a factory in China. Right. And he's just trying to hustle. He's trying to, 
make a living. But a lot of those people, you know, um, some of them sleep in their cars. Yeah. You know, they're doing this really hard circuit. And, um, you know, it's a certain kind of people. Mm -hmm. No, I've been there at the end of the the uh, circuit run where it was in, in Madison the last time. And I've made some great deals there because some of the guys just dealing in the used comics and everything, oh, yeah. they're, they're just like, I don't want to pack this up. How much do you want to give me for it? <laughs> you know, I'll yeah, buy like yeah. a whole bunch of them. I mean, yeah. There's, they're real merchants, you know, yeah. and, and, and you meet the most interesting, crazy characters. And yeah, and I mean, to me, that's just what my art is about is these weird characters. Yeah. And well, well and just, those people, you know, it coexists with what's going on there. Yeah. Like people coming there for those Pokemon things that were across there will turn around and see yours and go, what's this? And suddenly yeah, they they're like, really, I really like that. You know, it's, yeah. it's, and, it fits in the genre. Yeah. 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 And I do. And I had a, um, you know, really nice comic book artist, like a, and I really respect comic book artists. I, I mean, they can draw every kind of action, every kind of perspective, it's such a demanding genre. Yeah. And they, you know, they really do deserve a lot of respect. And, uh, but I had this very experienced, you know, comic book artist come over to me and um, I had a conversation with him and I was like, well, you know, I'm not sure I fit in with this. And he's like, you absolutely belong here. And uh, so that was really nice. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's really cool. I mean, you're, let's put it this way. You and like one other person, I specifically went to that con to go see their stuff. And on top of that, I'm like, and I'll pick up some toys while I'm here. So me, yeah. I was the other way around. <laughs> Why not? You know, Why not enjoy yeah. the, the buffet? <laughs> yeah. So it worked out for me totally. And, and me, I just found your uh, stuff online, which I guess I want to ask about that too. So how have you been using... Um, like the internet and everything to promote yourself. I know you have an Etsy shop and you've been selling things on there and you started doing these circuits. Like, did you do those first and then build the shop? Did you do them both at the same time? Like, I guess, does one help the other? How, how are you promoting and getting your stuff out there? Oh, it's been weird. I, um, I mean, I wish I knew the secret, you know, and Oh, we I, all do. <laughs> I, I, I work too. You know, I work at a couple jobs and so, uh, I only have so much time, but, you know, before the pandemic, um, and my accident, I would just sell paintings here and there, you know, mostly in those galleries in Indiana or Chicago, Okay. or maybe somebody just wanted to buy one or a commission once in a while. Um, <clears throat> and then I transitioned to the Etsy shop because I couldn't do anything. Like I was so homebound i mean i was in my room for months mm. you know so um i thought well i can at least start an etsy shop while i'm sitting here in bed and so i started it without really having much of a following or anything like that and then i worked on my instagram presence you know and tied those two together and i've gotten a lot of I, I, Instagram has been very good to me. I meet people on there. People contact me. I've gotten in shows. I've met other artists, gallery owner. You know, I mean, it's been very, very helpful. Hmm. So Instagram was really powerful for me. Facebook started off okay. And now it's just, I mean, it doesn't do anything because the algorithm just destroys anything you try to do. Like yesterday, you know, all I did was post um, that I was at the Comic Con. Yeah. And it had no reach because Facebook, you know, the algorithm knows it's so, you know, um, fine tuned that you try to post something or, and it'll, uh, then I'll get a message about how I can get $20 off an ad. <laughs> right, right. Well, and the other thing too is it didn't, like I saw that post that you are talking about and it showed up today. You were there yesterday. That's the other thing is yeah. it's like it didn't show up in my feed till yeah, today. It's very, it's just, slow and weird. I and think that's why they're trying to add stories to it because the stories will show up right away. The problem is, yeah. and this is so ironic, on Instagram, people look at the stories all the time. 
on Facebook, nobody, I'll get like one view on a story on Facebook. Like nobody looks at those on Facebook, (laughs) but yet they're at least instant, you know? So, you know, I should probably do TikTok, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, again, it's like there's only so much time in the day and I'd like to actually paint versus doing all this other stuff all the time. But I did the, you know, I did the Etsy shop out of, uh, you know, just kind of desperation (laughs) because I couldn't do anything else. Yeah. And so I started doing that. And at first, you know, it did really well through the pandemic, but it's been really quiet over the summer. Right. And what I found was people just, but then all my in-person events were very good. Mm -hmm. But I think that people were just sick of shopping online. They wanted to, (laughs) when I went to those pop-up fairs and stuff in Milwaukee, people were so excited to be out. Yeah. And everything was very, it was very party-like atmosphere. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, actually, I just realized something too, when we were talking about the Facebook thing, there's something that I've been messing with lately. And I want to ask you if this is possibly true from your experience. Now, that's a very, that's a very mysterious way for me to bring up this question. But so you said you belong to a lot of groups. When you open Facebook, do you see those postings from that group right away? And do you get alerts from those groups that you follow all the time? I do. Yeah. Okay. And you get those pretty instantaneously, right? I feel like they're throwing like, having a Facebook page, like my Facebook page, I used to promote it all the time and do stuff. And then all of a sudden it just went down. And then the reach, like even when I post something, the people that follow it don't see it, but yeah, they don't see it. I, I've i been messing around with groups and groups. People will get updates instantaneously. They will be because they're part of that group. They chose to be involved in it. And from what I'm noticing, it feels like they're putting priority on groups on Facebook. And I'm kind of considering like, should I just, I'll have my page, but I'll just ask people if they want to join a group. Because you can create a group directly from your page. uh, And it doesn't have to be like from your personal profile. Yeah. But I feel like those, I I get alerts for groups that I follow all the time. And it'll be like somebody just posted four minutes ago and I'll get an alert. Yeah. So I wonder maybe that's the way to start going. And then I mean, I follow some artists that, you know, they're very, these are very successful popular artists yeah i didn't even see their posts right yeah and they yeah yeah these are people with a lot of followers okay you know they should have traction and uh and then i did try some marketing on facebook but it was a dud honestly i i didn't find it that helpful it's it's tough it's uh they for make me. it they make it easy for and i i exhale in how facebook makes it seem like it's so easy and the funny thing is is they make it easy to access but it doesn't mean that people are marketers like they go you yeah. can do this and we'll boost your post and you have no idea what they're doing to it yeah. because it's like yes you can boost your post for $5 but facebook doesn't go and you should target an audience and a location and a time period and you should work on what branding gets seen and you don't know how it's being presented to people or where it's showing up or how it's showing yeah, up it's a little, yeah. it's a little sketchy <laughs> well it's it's just on on the back end it's still advertising and it's very complex in the way that it's set up like it's if you've ever been into google adwords Really, when you go into the business side of Facebook advertising, it's set up like AdWords. Like there's like a whole bunch of stuff you can do. Whereas they go, all you have to do is boost it, you know? And it's like, well, yeah, you can. And it shows the people that already see your stuff, but you're not finding it. Yeah, I mean, even if you change the demographic and stuff, sometimes it works. And And the other thing I'll say is I used to have more Etsy sales in my groups themselves. Like I But what happened was um, through the pandemic in the groups I was in, all of a sudden Facebook started cracking down on imagery. Really? Oh, yeah. And and it's kind of complicated, but, you know, you also have this sort of group of um, infantile people (laughs) that spend their time drawing dicks and... (laughs) 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 And they were all inside during the pandemic. And right. what happened was, you know, all these art groups, the uh, they kept getting shut down. Mm. And so they had to make, what they had to do was they didn't want to throw out their members, which frankly, some of them, it was so ridiculous. They should have just told them to stop it. Because it was, I mean, I'd scroll past it. 
but right. there were definitely things that were just really gross or offensive or just stupid, you know? Right. And, um, but they didn't want to do that. So what they did, a lot of the groups is they made the groups private. Uh -huh. So they're not public anymore. And so I used to be able to say, Hey, I've got new stickers in my shop or I have these new prints or something. And anybody from the public could see those posts. Mm -hmm. Well, now it's private. And so the groups have gotten less dynamic, less interesting because there's no new blood in there. Right. Yeah. So that kind of, so it's like, you know, sometimes you find a wave and you ride it, you know, and then it doesn't work anymore. Yeah. And I suppose that's the way with anything. I mean, even yeah. when uh, a few years ago when Etsy changed the way that they did stuff or uh, they added, I, I forget what the actual thing was, but it was something well, like pr promoted listings or something. Yeah. And they're a big pain in the butt too, but it, I think <laughs> it's, it's it is an easy, in many ways, it's easy to use. If you're small and you want to get something started, it is very user friendly. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot that's good about it. Um, people complain about the fees, but honestly, the fees, in my experience, are no worse than a gallery taking right. 40 or 50%. Yeah. I mean, it's going to cost you money. You know, it costs money to be in business. Yeah. So, you know, there's this, I mean, you can try to milk as many free platforms as you want to, but yeah. it, always, it always costs some money. Yeah, it's even the... Well, you know, I, you can get your return or not. Right, and I use like uh, the Square, you know, the Square app that you can get on your phone to swipe credit cards. They have a free yeah. online store that you can use, and I use that, and they still take fees just like they do for swiping the card. I mean, there, there are fees everywhere. It's just whether or not you pay up front or if you, you know pay later on. Actually, the one thing that I've discovered is on Facebook Marketplace, they have like some of the lowest fees. Like they Dude, barely no. Oh yeah, yeah. If so if you ever get a chance and I'm surprised that I don't meet more artists that sell their stuff on Facebook Marketplace cuz it gets seen along with the algorithm that we were just talking about. Yeah. Even though there's no control over what Facebook Marketplace does, it will show things to people based on keywords and interests. Like I see yeah. stuff pop up all the time where I'm just like, yeah, that's spot on the type of stuff I'm interested in. And it'll show me a marketplace posting. And yeah, that's how like I'll run into people. And also it's one of those things too, where it's like, if you don't like it, you just take it off. You know, <laughs> you know you, it doesn't cost anything to do it. And it's all handled through uh, Facebook. The only, the only drawback on that one is, is uh, the payout is a long period of time. It's like, oh. it's like five days after, either five or no, it's five days after delivery, which I mean, it makes oh. sense, but it's not yeah. that long, but with the way mail is right now, you know, like sometimes it takes two weeks for delivery and, yeah. but well, it's all handled it's, through there, wait, you know, right. So I, I don't have a problem with it, but I know that it's, you're not right. getting paid right away. So it's, I'm just putting that out there, but it yeah. is, it is probably the most plug and play cart that I've used. And it's fantastic for oh. me. I, I really enjoy it. So, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I meet people doing different things all the time. I mean, some people sell their art on eBay. Yeah, that too. That, but that one is like, you can, that one either is large fees or you have to pay to have a store. Um, there's actually an artist. Oh, I was trying to remember the name who I think you would be really interested in. And I don't want to look it up right now because we're talking, but their name is something like El Gato or something like that. And their artwork reminds me a lot of the art of your artwork. And they, I found them. Because they used to sell on uh, eBay. I'm actually trying to contact the person to see if I can talk to them. They live. Oh, that sounds familiar. It, yeah, it's. A, I'll look it up when we're done talking just so I can tell you exactly who it is. But um, uh, they they started out selling on eBay, and uh, that's how I found them. And I was curious if you did that too, uh, since you do Etsy. Yeah, I haven't. I mean, I. I, I don't know. I just kind of plot along. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really. I don't know. I'm not. Um, I'm not a bet the best planner. Like people are like, where do you want to be five years from now? I'm like alive. You right. Know? I mean, that's as, far, <laughs> as good as it gets. Sitting me. right here, trying to think of an answer to that question. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not good at that, and I also no, me neither. You know, have a very poor sense of. Um, what you're supposed to be doing at certain times in your life or ages or something. Like I really, this year was like, Oh, I'm old. Like I, 
I, you know, I just took me a long time to go, oh, wait a minute, Amy, like you, you might not have that much time left on the planet, you know, right. like, like, what are you going to do with it? And, uh, you know, that sort of thing. And, and so I, I don't always feel like I'm the best example of that. I mean, I'm kind of like, um, oh, the water's warm here. I will swim in it, you know, <laughs> like this. Uh, and then, and then I try new and I, and, um, I be really careful cause I overcommit myself and I think I can do anything. You know, I'm like, oh, I can do this. Right. You know, and then I, like I, you know, I started taking a, a college class in Japanese and, um, you know, on top of everything I'm doing. And of course it was online and it was just horrible. Right. <laughs> I mean, I, if it was in person, I think I would have lasted, but it was, it was remote and, um, they had these groups and the screen would cut out all the time and everybody's yelling in like Japanese and English. And <laughs> so I, complete fail on that one. You no, know? no. But I do have a tendency. My, luckily, my husband sometimes can talk some sense into me, you know, <laughs> but I do. I have trouble figuring out like whether I always want to do more, you know, I, right. I want to try. I want to try everything. Oh, yeah, so, I get that. Oh, it makes me crazy. I just am so, uh, you know, of course I want to do a comic book. Of course I want to do, you know, a solo show here, there, blah, blah, all the comic cons. I want to, you know, of course I do, but yeah. I'm very limited. <laughs> so right. It's frustrating. And that's where the youth part comes in. You know, people are like, I paint all night. I mean, I see people in their 20s, you know, they paint all night. And I'm like, I have to go to bed now. <laughs> I'm tired. I need to sit and watch TV now. You know, I can't. I can't you have to have to unwind sleep. time. There's unwind time. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, so I, I just realized I never really had you explain what you would call your style of artwork that you make. Uh... I think really I'm more of a pop surrealist. I like that. Okay. And because not that I use that many like celebrity images or things like that, but um, I think my work was affected because I took so much. It's kind of interesting. So I've had some people ask me that are my age uh, and it, it really took me aback. I had somebody come up to me at a show and she said, how is your work so contemporary? And I oh. didn't know what she was talking about, really. Yeah. And she said, I said, well, what do you mean? And she said, well, you know, we went to school at the same time, but my work looks like work from the 80s. Or, you know, each gener each decade has a flavor to it. Oh, so like she was, she was kind of stuck in time. In a way, you know, because you have, you develop your style at a certain yeah. time, you know, and then it sticks with you. Hmm. And uh, I didn't know how to answer that. But I, what I realized was that, you know, I took all that time off. And in some ways, my ideas and stuff are exactly the same. Like I just picked up right where I left off, which is really weird. But I think you do do that. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, um, I think that I'm more open to... Um, sort of taking the things that are going on around me in, you know, in culture, in media. And that creeps into my work a little more because I'm not as set, you know, in my ways as somebody who had been painting all the way through. Yeah. So I think that gap, you know, it changed my work. Yeah. Obviously. And what would you say are some of the influences you've had? Um, well, definitely, you know, uh, science fiction, um, definitely, uh, I love stuff that comes out of Japan, like everybody does. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just visual, you know, I really, um, I love Japanese fashion, even though I'm, I'm just very plain. I'm not like somebody that expresses myself outwardly, you know? Okay. Like I just know way I it'd take too much energy to put on crazy wigs and <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. Why did you jump straight in to put on crazy wigs? <laughs> that's what a lot of those people do. You know, okay. Japanese, Japanese street style clothing. Have yeah. You ever seen that? No. Yeah, they wear 
giant platform shoes and okay so kind of like the comic-con okay that, that yeah. kind of goes into yeah the comic-con circuit they and the cosplay it. stuff yeah all right <laughs> live that way every day okay and uh so i you know i'm just fascinated and i just finishing up a painting now where i actually went on instagram and i um there was a japanese musician and she's got a very interesting look and i said can i paint you you know hmm. sometimes i actually ask you, you were Leonardo DiCaprio on Titanic. Can I paint you? <laughs> yeah, I do. I ask people if I can paint them. And I say, I always say, but you may not look anything like yourself or you might have four eyes. I think every something. artist should say that. <laughs> so, you know, I, but, uh, but I might be fascinated with that person. I mean, I generally am, I think really I'm a portrait artist of, a weird kind. Okay. Work, it's, not, it's not about action. It's not about, um, you know, it's like a nonlinear narrative, nonlinear storytelling, you know, and I just like to come up with these characters, you know, and so, but they're really like portraits. Hmm. But um, yeah, I like the uh, stuff coming out of Japan is always interesting to me. I, um, I love carnivals. I love burlesque. Uh, I like, um, you know, I love nature. Okay. And I'm, I'm married to somebody that is a big, big uh, hiker. I can't do as much of that now, obviously. But right. um, we went all over the United States. We backpacked, you know, and all that. And so um, I think, and when I was a kid, you know, I've just always been the, like, what's in the forest, the witch in the forest. <laughs> I like that kind of mystery, you know? Yeah. And, and I mean, all my, I think all my paintings, uh, and people have really funny reactions to them too. It's, um, they always say, uh, I, it makes me feel a way, but I don't, I can't say what it is. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Actually, that's a great reaction. Yeah, they have feelings and they'll come up and say that, you know, I, I don't know. I'm, a, it's a little creepy, but I, but I'm enchanted, I'm entranced, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. It's, it's exactly what I want is I just. I can't I want, look away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just want them to, I, I feel like, uh, I think one of the goals that I have when I paint is I want people to be a little enchanted and lured in and it gives them a safe space to have like some sort of uh, dark kind of peculiar feelings in a really safe way. Okay. And yeah. If and, um, you know, did you ever read, uh, Ray Bradbury, something wicked this way comes. I don't think I have, but I'm familiar with what you're talking about. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, that was something, that was a book that I read when I was really young and that stayed with me forever. Hmm. Alice in Wonderland, you know, these things where it's like, uh, uh, things happen and they're, they're a little scary. They're enchanting, but nobody really gets hurt in the end. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great way to, okay. That, that's a great yeah, way to describe yeah. it. <laughs> well, yeah, if, so. if people wanted to be enchanted and not hurt in a way, where could they see your stuff to have this experience? <laughs> where would you suggest they go yeah. check your stuff out? Well, there's always Instagram, which I, honestly is probably one of the, you know, I'm always posting uh, process videos and shots of my work. And I think that that's kind of like the most active online place to see what I do. Okay. I mean, if you're looking for prints or to purchase something, then my Etsy shop is the best place. And then as far as showing my work, I'm kind of all over the place. I mean, I I show stuff at uh, a couple galleries in Indiana, um, Prom a Promise You Art House, also Paul Henry's Art Gallery. Um, and then I used to show more regularly at Scout Gallery in Milwaukee. Hmm. Um, but they had to move because they had flooding in their building and oh. there was a pandemic. And so I still do events with them, like pop-up art fairs and that kind of thing. But um, they're in the process of shifting themselves. Hmm. 
here, uh, they have a new location. So I don't know, you know, where that all stands, but, um, and then I lately, like I, right now I have some work up at Megan's framing on East Washington. She actually has some very nice paintings of mine. Oh, great. Right now. Yeah. I did it for gallery night. Okay. Which was as at the time of uh, recording this, which was uh, a couple days ago. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so what, I have some stuff up there. Okay. And what was the uh, Instagram handle? Oh, it's at Space Throb. <laughs> nice. I wanted you to say that just so people would know that it's not your name. It's 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 that name that apparently makes you laugh, although it makes me laugh too. It always makes me laugh because uh, the way that I developed that was when I was first starting a series of paintings. They were sort of about these like space girls, you know? Yeah. And um, so I thought, well, instead of a heartthrob, you're a space throb, right? That's funny. It's exactly what I thought it was then, because <laughs> that was kind of my understanding of what it was. And I'm like, <laughs> it couldn't be that simple. I couldn't have figured it out that, it's that easily. Simple. <laughs> and so I, you know, I thought, well, that's pretty funny. And so I started using that. But what's really funny is um, whenever I do an event or anything, like the other day I was at, you know, when I was at the gallery night i met this really nice young man that started this little tiny gallery eakins emporium eakins emporium and i said he asked me who i was or about my work and i said my name and he just had this blank look and i said space throb and he goes oh space throb (laughs) so because madison's kind of weird and i don't get to like I don't meet people as much right. and there's not as many venues. Um, that's how people in Madison know me because they follow me on Instagram. Huh. So I always have to say I'm space throb. <laughs> I'm Batman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to thank you so much for being on the show today. And I'm so glad we got a chance to talk. Yeah, it was fun. Thank you for having me. 